Druid was the first class I chose for my first playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. Them being these nature-bound warriors with a variety of different strategies and abilities that you can link into made them so much fun to play. Because I also have experience playing them in Dungeons and Dragons, I thought it might be good to make a guide to Druids in Baldur's Gate 3 and quickly explaining how the different circles come into play and which way makes the most sense for your desired playstyle. Now ahead of time, let's take a quick look at the notable spells. So Healing Word is one of the better options for when you're in a pinch mid-fight. You can bonus action to heal someone, which then still leaves you with your action to either cause havoc with a melee attack or casting some sort of spell. Good Berry is one of the best options, especially early on and especially at the very end of the game because of the fact that you may not be using as many first level spell slots and these serve as healing potions essentially because you get four of them and often heal more than you would from a healing potion. Especially near the end of the game, I found myself using these a lot because I didn't have a need to use my first level spells, but they're also very useful early on when you may not have a lot of healing potions. The Guidance Cantrip is arguably the most versatile cantrip in the game, allowing you to succeed a number of different skill checks, especially those in dialogue or while you're trying to unlock or disarm a trap. Spike Growth is another good honorable mention. It's incredibly useful even when in the later parts of the game since it covers a wide enough area slowing all enemies that traverse it while simultaneously dealing damage to them. If you strategize this properly, you can essentially kill a load of enemies before they even get to hit you once. Now quickly diving into what different feats I would recommend for the Druid class. Starting off with Lucky, which is arguably the best feat in the game. It's the most versatile because it allows you to choose three different times per long rest at your convenience that you get to have advantage, or you can cause an enemy to reroll an attack roll. Now when you're giving yourself the benefit, you can do this for attack rolls, saving throws, or ability checks. Another great option would be Mage Slayer, which is especially useful for when you're in Wild Shape, making mages less treacherous because you now have advantage on any saving throw against them if they're in melee range of you, and you can use a reaction to immediately make an attack back against them. Also, enemies that you hit have disadvantage on concentration saving throws, meaning if they're concentrating on a spell, they have disadvantage on being able to keep casting that concentration spell, which is super handy. The final feat I can recommend for druids would be Savage Attacker. So this is a good option for when you're in Wild Shape as well, because it increases your damage output by essentially giving you advantage on your damage rolls by letting you roll a second dice for your damage calculation, and whichever is highest is the one that you actually do. Quickly just want to let you know, this is not the same as attack rolls. The difference here being attack rolls are your chance to hit, damage rolls is simply how much damage you do after you've successfully hit them. Starting off for the different circles that you unlock at level 2, we're talking about Circle of the Moon. Now this focuses primarily on transformation, allowing you to unlock additional transformations with your wild shape, such as Dire Raven, which is great at blinding enemies and sort of being a sneaky, flying around creature to do stealth work or a Sabertooth Tiger, which actually regenerates health every round and is a tank and damage dealer all in one. If you're trying to fulfill the fantasy of turning into this myriad of different wild shape creatures and doing massive amounts of damage and having quite a bit of health, this is definitely the one you're looking for. You also unlock Primal Strike at level six, which causes your attacks to be magical. Now what this means is it overcomes resistances that some enemies have to non-magical slashing, piercing, or blunt damage. Essentially just making sure that your creatures scale against the enemies you're facing. An ability unique to the Circle of the Moon Druid is Lunar Mend. Now what this does is it allows you to expend spell slots to heal yourself while in animal form to make sure you can stay in the fight for quite a bit longer. This becomes especially useful as you level up because not only do you have higher health pools while in this state, but you also have quite a bit more spell slots that you can then use to just stay in the fight in whatever form you're in. This is arguably the most versatile subclass in the game as you're able to enjoy the fruits of powerful spells, especially those that limit movement and cause damage to a large pool of enemies in front of you, 
while also being able to tank a lot of damage with two extra health pools per short rest because every short rest restores all of your wild shapes, even if you're still in wild shape form. Next up is Circle of the Land. Now this is more spell casting focused, very much so focusing on harnessing your magical energy. Depending on the land you choose, Arctic, Forest, Underdark, etc., you'll learn two spells that are always prepared at levels 3, 5, 7, and 9, creating a more wizard-like character, amassing a large variety of spells to be cast at any given time. To further bolster this, you actually have a natural recovery skill allowing for restoring spent spell slots when you're out of combat, keeping you available to fight whenever you need to. The number of slots you can restore is up to half of your character's level rounded up. Something worth noting here is if you're trying to restore a level 3 spell, it will count as 3 character levels worth. So if you're level 6, you can restore 1 level 3 spell slot. You also learn an additional cantrip at levels 2 and 4. Now for me personally, I didn't find the cantrips as a druid to be incredibly useful, barring stuff like Guidance and maybe Conjure Flame, which I thought was fun, but this is something that sort of bolsters the mage-like style that you're playing. You also become immune to difficult terrain, so for instance, you will not have halved speed when you're traversing. Finally, at level 10, you unlock Nature's Ward, which means you are immune to being charmed, or frightened by elemental or fey enemies. You also are immune to disease and poison, which no longer affects you, which is just a general nice buff. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Circle of the Spores. Now this subclass allows you to focus on becoming one with nature as you take on this sort of plant-like entity. At level 2, you unlock Symbiotic Entity giving you 4 temporary hit points and you deal an additional 1-6 to six necrotic damage while your temporary hit points are active. You can also shoot out a halo of spores as a reaction, starting at level 2, dealing 1d4 damage which is doubled while Symbiotic Entity is active. This is also combined with the fact that you can still use Wild Shape which just makes this much more varied of an experience. At level 6, you unlock Fungal Infestation, allowing you to raise a mildewed corpse to fight by your side. Now, this is just kind of a cool addition. It's nice to have a battle buddy. I always find that to be a fun way to experience the game. At level 10, you unlock Spreading Spores ability, allowing you to emit a cloud of spores around you, dealing Halo of Spores damage to all creatures within that range that fail a constitution save upon entering into the cloud. While leveling, you also gain access to a number of spells and cantrips, such as Animate Dead, allowing you to raise a corpse, or a Cloud Kill, a great area of effect spell against a large group of enemies. Now, this was my guide to the Druid class in Baldur's Gate 3. Was there anything I missed or something I should have touched on more? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, if you did, leave a like, consider subscribing, stay safe.